I just express a lot of gratitude for folks in the space today and for being here with us. It takes a lot of bravery to write about things that are hard, to write about stories or experiences that are painful. Um, and so whatever you write or even don't, just whatever you think about, whatever you're showing up with, we're just grateful for that. Um, and we wanna respect everybody's boundaries. So to that end, we don't, and I never say this in a way that is uh, sophisticated or respectable, but for lack of a better term, we don't dig into anyone's shit. So you don't have to like prove up anything to us. You don't have to tell the whole story. You don't have to tell any part of the story. We never pressure folks to share what it is that they've written. Uh, we just hold the space for people and folks can show up how they need to and want to. Um, and finally, it's really important to remember that survivors don't ever fit our assumptions or stereotypes or expectations. There is no one ideal survivor. Survivors are not a monolith. And the way that people move through whatever it is that they've experienced varies from person to person. Um, and that's just important to remember as we listen to people and sort of hold space with each other. Um, Mojde, is there anything that I've forgotten? No, I think you, I think you covered it. Great, great, great. great. Um, and yeah, if there's anything that anybody feels like we skipped or missed, um, our, our community guidelines uh, on our website are like 40 bajillion pages long. So we tried to keep it pretty concise for today. So if we missed anything, please feel free uh, to share that with us uh, in the chat. And so um, before we get started, um, I think we're, we're going we're gonna to start with, with poems, right, Mojde, before we get to prompts? Yeah, uh, I, I was going to just uh, give folks a little proto prompt. Oh, we... yeah, yeah, that's right. Um, so and I did have one more note for, for the guidelines before we yes. on since we are recording. Um, most of you should be able depending on your your version of zoom, you should be able to change your name if you don't want your name to be captured as well. I think the recordings typically don't capture names, but just in case. Um, you wish to change that, um, then I encourage you to also um, do that. Or if you, there's a photo attached to your account, you could also um, nix that as well if you wish to um, at any point. Um, so with that, uh, let's jump into this proto prompt. Um, we will be reading some poems in a moment and discussing those poems. But before we do that, I would love for you guys to do something um, that is just a little bit of brain dumping. Um, so grab your pencil or your Google Docs or your phone or whatever you're gonna be um, using to be creative on. And um, the first thing I'd like you to do, um, and as survivors, I think this can be kind of hard sometimes, but I want you to list, I'm gonna give you a solid, like 30 seconds and see how we're doing um, to brain dump all of your strengths and powers. Just don't think about it, just put it down on the page. Whatever it is, not full sentences, just strengths and, strengths and powers. All right, wrap up that thought. You can throw up a react if you still need more time, if you feel like you still wanna brain dump a little. If one or two people throw up a react, we'll take some more time. Okay, leave some space because you might come up with more things that are your strengths and powers. Now I want you to list the, the strengths and powers you wish you had. We'll take about the same amount of time. All right, now let's take the last 30 seconds to add to either list. 
strengths and powers you know you have, strengths and, strengths and powers you wish you had. All right, wrap up that thought, leave space. Just always leave space. Anything either of us says, just leave space in case you wanna add more. Um, I want you to now write your own personal definition of vengeance. There's no right or wrong. Your personal definition of vengeance. It can be a creative def definition, it can be literal, whatever it is. You can bullet point, anything goes. This is a reference for you. Personal definition of vengeance. All right, now leave space in case you wanna add, of course. And now I would like you to write your personal definition of redemption. Again, it can be a creative definition, it can be a literal definition, bullet points, whatever. Your own definition of redemption. All right, go ahead and wrap up your thoughts. And I'm gonna go ahead and volley it back to my beloved co-host. Thank you, Moshe. Um, those proto prompts were fun. I, I, wrote, I wrote as well, um, so thank you for those. Um, so before we get started reading our first poem, we just wanna acknowledge uh, the act of white terrorism that happened uh, in Atlanta, um, where several Asian women were murdered. Um, there's obviously just, like, what can you say? I feel like these things keep happening over and over and over again. And uh, there, of course, are excuses being made for the person who murdered those women, the white man who hurt those women. Um, you know, through absolutely no fault of their own, no desire of their own, just, you know, living their lives, doing what they do, uh, moving through their world um, just as normal. And so we just wanted to acknowledge that because the next poem that we're about to read um, is by a poet named I, who is both of Black and Asian descent. Um, and just to acknowledge it anyway, you know, even though um, people I think have a very like, I think super narrow definition of of domestic violence. Um, you know, I think violence where the where the person is known to you or is like a part of of your world or part of somebody who you've seen or interacted with. And I believe that's that's part of the story of of some of those women that that you know this is somebody who they knew who frequented the places where they where they worked. Um, I would consider that to be you know maybe not necessarily domestic but certainly interpersonal. Um, violence. And so this poem uh, really highlights that experience. Um, Mojde, are you able to drop the, the Google Docs link into that poem, um, into the chat for folks, just in case people may want to, um, may want to, may want to read it and follow along? Um, 
and I believe anybody with the link is able to is able to view it because um, I know folks kind of can process language in all different kinds of ways. So we want to honor that. Um, let me know when you're ready, Mosh. And while Mojde is, is finding the link for that and dropping it in the chat, I want to shout out the anthology that this poem is from because it is one of my favorite uh, anthologies. It's called Sistifier, um, which is a book of poetry and prose, um, womenist poetry and prose. Um, and it, it, you know, I believe it's out of print. It was published in the late 90s, but it has a lot of incredible pieces in it. And this is um, one of them. Um, so here we go. This is called Finished. You force me to touch the black rubber flaps of the garbage disposal that is open like a mouth saying, ah. You tell me it's the last thing I'll feel before I go numb. Is it my screaming that finally stops you or is it the fear that even you are too near the edge of this Niagara to come back from? You jerk my hand out and give me just enough room to stagger around you. I lean against the refrigerator, not looking at you, or anything, just staring at a space which you no longer inhabit, that you've abandoned completely now, to footsteps receding to the next feeding station where a woman will be eaten alive after cocktails at five. The flowers and chocolate, the kisses, the swings and near misses of new love will confuse her until you start to abuse her verbally at first as if trying to quench a thirst, you'll drink her in small outbursts of rage. Then you'll rip, whip out your semi-automatic, make her undress, or to listen to hours of radio static as torture for being amazed that the man of her dreams is a nightmare who only seems happy when he's making her suffer. The first time you hit me, I left you, remember? It was December, an icy rain was falling and it froze on the roads so that driving was unsafe, but not as unsafe as staying with you. I ran outside in my nightgown while you yelled at me to come back. When you came after me, I was locked in the car. You smashed the window with a crowbar, but I drove off anyway. I was back the next day and we were on the bare mattress because you'd ripped up the sheets, saying you'd teach me a lesson you wouldn't speak except to tell me I needed discipline, needed training in the fine art of remaining still when your fist slammed into my jaw. You taught me how ropes could be tied so I'd strangle myself, how pressure could be applied to old wounds until I cried for mercy. Until tonight, when those years of our double exposure end with shot after shot. How strange it is to be unafraid. When the police come, I'm sitting at the table the cup of coffee that I am unable to drink as cold as your body. I shot him, I say, he beat me. I do not tell them how the emancipation from pain leaves nothing in its place. So everybody take a deep breath, because that is a heavy, heavy piece. Um, and if you wanna pop it in the chat, if you wanna say it, um, you know, out loud, feel free. But here are some questions that I always sort of like to ask um, after hearing this poem. The first one is, what images remained or resonated or are still resonating after this poem was read? And I'll give everybody a second to, to respond. Okay, and then another question that I have. Um, okay, here we go. And this is from Rose staring at the space where the abuser did not inhabit. Yeah, yeah, that's a good one. Um, I've always been a fan of, the, of the, the double exposure line. Our double exposure ends with shot after shot. Yeah, the dustbin mouth. Um, thank you, Anjana, that's, that's a good one as well. Um, yeah, this poem, I think one of its strength is, strengths is how, um, how stark it is, that the language is very spare. It's very simple. Um, and I, there's something about that that I just really, uh, that I can really appreciate. Um, 
yeah, the nightgown line feels super familiar and vulnerable. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and I think too, just the, the sort of admitting of things that make her not a sympathetic character or would not make her a sympathetic character to some people, like the fact that, that she left and then returned, um, you know, that, that is, that's something that we hear often, right? Like, oh, but you went back though. Um, and, you know, you came back, um, you know, so I feel like we, we, we hear that quite a bit. Um, I want to ask too, who is she addressing in the poem? And the answer might seem very obvious. And so my apologies if it seems like a, a simple, simple question. Um, Christina, the comparison of cold coffee really emphasizes the distaste we experience from the abuser. Yeah, absolutely. The cold coffee and his cold body, it evoked the feeling of numbness. Yeah, absolutely. Um, that Because that's what it is, right? Like you go through trauma and even if you, you know, that's what they always say, right? Like, oh, you know, you should fight back and just fight back and have a gun. And, you know, that, that solves all your problems. But people, I don't think, understand um, the toll that it takes on folks who are not, I think, um, who I'll say this, don't, don't use pleasure or don't use uh, violence as, as a tool for their own pleasure or to get a sense of power and control. Like when you use violence is like your self-defense, um, which in the moment you may enjoy that um, and that vengeance might feel really good. But I think afterwards um, for many people, there is a numbness um, that takes place. There's a, there's a sort of a emptiness that can emerge um, even if you're successful in fighting off someone or getting out of that situation um, and you have to hurt somebody to do that. Um, it's not like, you know, a lot of movies and TV shows make it feel like super triumphant. And I don't, I don't think it's always like that. Um, certainly not been like that um, for me personally as a survivor of, of domestic violence. Um, there, there is like a numbing that happens, a coldness that kind of settles in. Um, and my last question, um, so in answer to the question, who is she addressing in the poem? She's addressing the abuser, obviously. That's who she's speaking to. Um, and it's important to, to note that, um, that that is who she's speaking to, that's who she's addressing, um, because there's a lot of power. I actually do a lot of epistolary work where I, I write letters to people, um, you know, all kinds of people, you know, folks I've broken up with, old bosses, um, folks who, you know, passed away. Um, it's a really good exercise. And even though this isn't a letter format, that sort of, you know, format of speaking to the person who hurt you uh, can be really powerful. That can be a really powerful exercise. Um, and then finally, what I want to ask is, is this a story that folks need to hear? And, you know, you define folks as you, as you want to, folks who are survivors of particular kinds of violence, folks who are, um, you know, people of color, folks who are black, folks who are Asian, folks who are, you know, uh, a mixture of different ethnicities um, and races. Um, do people, is this the kind of story that people need to hear? And then why or why not? Um, why would somebody need to hear a story like this? Um, so if folks have answers for that, please feel free to um, chime in. Feel free to type something into the chat. Um, we, can, we can kind of talk about it. Um, And this is from Rose, survivor stories let us know we're not alone. Yeah, thank you. Um, folks need to hear stories like this. This is from Aaron, uh, so that they don't feel alone. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, that's that's like, I'm sorry. Yes, sweetie. Can I use your bubble? Sure. Yeah? Yes, you can, can use, the use the bubble. You can use the bubbles. My little ponies are having a bathtub right now in the bath, so bubble bath is, is required. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, these stories, I, you know, thank you so much, Aaron and Rose, for, for sharing those thoughts. They're important because I think that with every story that can be told, it really does explode the stereotypes and the assumptions that we have about survivors. Like this piece where clearly, you know, I is, is the triumphant sort of like figure at the end, right? Like gets the vengeance, gets the sort of like one up on the person who's been abusing her, but, um, 
is like super numb in the aftermath. It's not celebratory. It's not like, you know, um, I don't know, like a Quentin Tarantino movie where everybody's like running around and cheering and like the triumphant music plays in the background as they drive off in a convertible. Like that's not like what is happening, right? Um, and, you know, for, for a lot of us that have navigated these dynamics or supported other people in navigating these dynamics, we know um, that it's not that simple, right? It's never that simple. So I think that's why these stories are also necessary, um, you know, to, to share. Um, from Anjana, yes, because we way oversimplify the survivor experience as the backstory for fictional female characters to be violent, the basic misunderstanding that vengeance heals survivors. Oh, yes, say it one more time, Anjana. Um, Chanel, it should, it should be heard. I believe that it always helps with connection, yes. Um, and from Tere, stories show the nuance of survivorship. Absolutely. Um, that's one of the things that I say all the time. It's one of the reasons why uh, I started surviving the mic and why folks have over the years helped, you know, other than me help sustain um, what we do because um, hearing stories from survivors adds the necessary nuance to understand actually what needs to be done um, in order to sort of eradicate this kind of violence, right? And I'm not so naive as to think like, we're going to just, we're going to end sexual and domestic violence everywhere all over the place, right? Like I'm not, I'm not that naive, but I do know that like things can change, right? Laws can shift the ways that people interact with survivors can change um, and become better. And part of how that happens um, is through, I think the generosity of people who are willing to share their stories and experiences with people, people who are willing to, to sort of open up and say this painful thing happened to me and here's how I felt about it. Um, and then they let us benefit um, from the wisdom of their experience. It's an extraordinary gift um, that survivors give to the world. Um, so, what I want to do now is throw out a prompt um, for folks to, to sort of reflect on this poem and, and maybe write their own version of it. Um, and we're going to we're going to put this prompt. It's at the bottom of the Google Doc, Mojde, if you're looking for it. Um, we're going to write a poem um, or write something because it doesn't necessarily have to be a poem um, that either addresses a harm doer, someone who has harmed you or someone you love or care about or addresses those who could or should support someone who has been harmed, either yourself or someone you love or care about, um, and just talk to them. Um, that I think is important, like addressing people directly. And it's, and you know, I'm gonna preface this by saying this is hard, right? This is hard, this is not easy work to do, um, but see if you can lean into some writing where you maybe address somebody who hurt you and you get to say whatever it is that you wanna say to them. Um, so we're going to start, um, we're going to start with five minutes, right? So I'll put five minutes on the clock. Um, folks can, you know, turn off their video and take that time. I will call us back when we have about one minute to go. Um, and then at the five minute mark, if people feel like they need more time, they can, you know, put that into the chat or, or, or do a react um, and we'll add another couple minutes. So five minutes, 534 now. So we'll be back at 539. And the prompt is in the chat. Also, if it's helpful, I'm going to drop something else into the chat from your lists. You can also pull from them, um, pull from your strengths that you've you've uh, listed already. Leaning into the belief that you really have all of the strengths, that they're all true.
it all right folks a few minutes or a minute about a minute to wrap up All right, we've gotten a request for a little bit more time, so we're going to come back uh, at 542. All right, and I'm going to slowly ask uh, everybody to start transitioning back. All right, so. Um, if you're still writing, that's cool. Um, I'm going to move on to the next poem that we're going to read in our workshop today. Uh, we're ending in about 18 minutes, so I want to make sure that we can get this poem in, get our next prompt in, and hopefully uh, hear back from a couple folks. Um, this next poem is by a Chicago writer, um, a dear friend of mine uh, and a survivor. Her name is Enina J. And uh, this poem is called What Kind of Sister? Uh, I believe Mojde is going to drop the link to the piece in the chat, so I will wait on that before uh, I will begin reading. Cool. All right, so here we go. What kind of sister is it that you want to be? Does standing on my brown back make you feel free? Do you stand for Black girls or do you hang us from trees? I don't trust you because the ones you diss look just like me. But I bet the white folks love you because you bring vision to their dreams, see? Every seven seconds a woman is beaten, then we betray each other. We'd rather stand for a self-proclaimed jacked up sister or brother. We don't bring the reckoning, just the slow death of one another. We shame the survival of our aunts, cousins, friends, grandmas, and mothers. And so the bruised voices of tomorrow's children are routinely smothered. What's it gonna take? How many of us on the stake? How many hearts are we gonna break? I mean, for God and God's sake, I pray every moment that I'm awake, that there's a tree that I can shake, that there's a storm that I can make. Who's gonna hold me when I ache? Who's gonna hold me when I ache? Who's gonna hold me when I ache? Cause I've heard the things we whisper and we seem to get a thrill from talking down on other sisters like we know her whole deal. And sometimes the matter of her survival, is just a warm hug and hot meal. We tell her, call the police, go to the shelter when we know that shit ain't real. Cause don't you know the ones they finally leave are the ones they finally kill? She was a hustler, 
smooth on the outside with pain bursting at her seams. She thought she was a crash site. She never learned how to dream and good loving always proved to be much further away than it seemed. Sometimes she'd laugh out loud for no reason, just to mute a piercing scream. They called her a wild girl, but they always looked at her with the wrong eyes because it was her honesty that burned her skin inside a ghetto filled with lies and open wounds will still bleed heavy no matter what the disguise. Her madness was the social painting black girls are nurtured to despise. She was a hustler, getting to the next bed, the next meal, finding some relief from hell. She was born inside a coffin and we've been hammering in them nails. And that's the story of her life is an altered and wicked tale about brown girls who get locked up for bullshit and then cannot afford the bail. And nobody's left out here who's gonna hug that lady's children. Nobody cares enough to ask them what they might be feeling. And a child with no mama suffers a cruel and vicious killing. Somebody's gonna find her hanging from a sturdy ceiling or running from here to there with a hunger, but nobody can feed it. They won't let her touch her mama through that glass no matter how much she needs it. There's a struggle going on inside her soul, but she ain't grown enough to lead it. So many pamphlets on pain and survival, nobody even asked if she could read it. And I ain't immune because I was taught that sister was so much lower than me. And it was easy for me to pretend she was different. She never made me feel free. I didn't know I was supposed to use my strength to cut her down from the tree, stand for her, put arms around her because whoever she is, that's who I be. Because she and I were both different strands of the very same rope. We both teeter right there in the crack between death and hope. We're overdosing on shame, sex, pain, disease, jail, and dope. Our bodies have been beat, kicked, raped, mutilated, sterilized, and groped. We are all suffering. See, we just got different ways that we might cope. Some sisters cry the shit out and live to fight another day. Some sisters hold it all in. They tame the fire and all they say. Some sisters say, hey, you gonna use me anyway. Well, motherfucker, you gonna pay. Some sisters write, some sisters drum, some sisters gotta pray. Some sisters out here risking their lives to keep the dangers to women and girls away. And it ain't no use in us crying tears for her now because she is already gone. And it ain't gonna ease nobody with me to write her a goodbye song. She left other sisters behind, other sisters just having to be strong. And maybe I don't know you. Maybe I don't see you. Maybe everything I think of you is wrong. But in your very existence, you beg the question of me all day long about the kind of sister it is that I really wish to be into standing on another sister's fractured back make me feel free. See, I'm, and now I'm either going to stand for Black girls or I'm going to hang you from trees. I don't trust myself sometimes because the ones I neglect, they look just like me. But I want to die trying to be a vision of my mama's dream. See, but what about you? What kind of sister is it are you really trying to be? Um, I love that poem. <laughs> I've always loved that poem. Um, I want to acknowledge that the poems that, that, that we have, um, read today really do privilege, um, you know, femme energy and, and the use of she and her. And so I want to acknowledge as well that, you know, domestic violence, interpersonal violence happens to folks, um, of all genders. Um, and of all expressions. Um, so I want to throw that out there um, and say, you know, um, next time we do a workshop like this, we'll dig deeper and try and find something that's also like more representative of more uh, genders and more expressions. Um, it's just something that, that I noticed in reading those two pieces, which is like my own privilege coming to the fore. Um, so I see a few, a few folks in the chat who have like kind of called out some images. Um, so again, the same question, what images, uh, remained or resonated after the poem uh, was read. Um, Ona says, I don't trust myself sometimes because the ones I neglect, they look just like me. Yep, they won't let her touch her mama through that glass no matter how much she needs it. There's a struggle going on inside her soul, but she ain't grown enough to lead it. Yep, absolutely. Um, from Bianca, phew, wow. Yep, she was born inside a coffin and we've been hammering in them nails. Yep, absolutely. Um, all of that, um, my personal line that always stood out to me um, was so many pamphlets and brochures, nobody, you know, nobody asked if she could read it. That, that's the one that like took me clean out <laughs> when I first heard this poem performed by Enina J and I've had the pleasure of seeing it perform live, uh, several times. Um, you know, you can find Enina J too on like Facebook, uh, Instagram, all of that. She's got books out, visual art, all kinds of things. So please go and support her because she's an amazing artist. Um, so then this begs like a couple of a couple of other questions. Um, 
And Mojde, if you want to, if you want to sort of like ask these questions and kind of talk about like the next prompt, I'm going to, I'm going to pass it over to you to do that. So I, what, what barriers do you guys think exist um, for survivors seeking support? What do you guys think are some of the barriers that exist? meditating on this this particular piece that really draws draws a lot of different things out language absolutely fear absolutely shame for sure blame yeah yeah not wanting to lose community Huge, absolutely. Absolutely. That most services aren't inclusive or responsive to all genders, absolutely. Or economic brackets or skin tone, <laughs> let alone race, right? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Access, absolutely. Yeah. Money, dollar dollar bills, absolutely. What else? Are there things that you think might be more nuanced? Things that are, um, you know, even in, in smaller groups, what are the things that sort of challenge us or create barriers even between, you know, um, femme to femme or queer to queer or whatever, you know, are there barriers there? saying it makes it real. Denial can feel safer, absolutely. Not, not being able to see it as valid, absolutely. Internalized guilt, 100%. Abusive person, grooming community as well as survivor. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then not thinking what happened to you is bad enough or traumatic enough. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. I, I, I feel like I feel like some of these are really speaking to the way that like gaslighting functions, right? It's we, we are told things that like swirl and tell us different stories constantly. Um, we have the obligation to share once spoken. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, fear of unleashing the anger or sadness. How do you then go back to work and answer the phone all polite? Absolutely. These are all great suggestions or great, great feedback. Um, and you guys can keep, keep thinking, keep adding to the chat if, if you'd like. Um, I'm going to go ahead and give you uh, the last prompt. Um, what kind of sister, brother, sibling, supporter am I? ask yourself, how do I show up for other people who are survivors? How do I show up for myself? How do I want others to show up for me? So I'm going to drop that in the chat as well. And again, I want you guys to lean into thinking about those belief that those strengths and powers truly exist. Um, whether or not you do actually believe them, like in this moment, believe, like push yourself to believe them. And we'll come back in five minutes. I'll watch the clock.
Okay, just a one minute warning, um, unless someone drops into the chat that you need more time. All right, if folks want to come back together. So we'll just do a quick check in here um, with the uh, conference admins. Um, Tara and I, I don't remember who else from the conference is in the chat. Um, uh, do we have a little bit of time to hang tight if folks want to share right now or um, or are we on a hard six o'clock? If you'd like to go over a little bit, um, people have dinner next. So Very people, good. folks can either dip if they are wanting that hour or they can stick around and um, wrap up. Perfect, perfect. Um, yeah, we can just take a couple minutes if anybody wants to share um, either a hotline or part of what you've written, um, feel free to drop into the chat. Love to hear um, what folks have um, come up with. Uh, Christina, go for it. Feel free to turn on your microphone and feel free to turn on your camera if you feel comfortable. Hi, um, I probably won't turn on the camera, but um, I'd like to share a little bit on what I wrote. It's titled The Mother of My Storms. Looking out the window of her car doesn't ever distract me from the words that stick to the thoughts in my mind. I turn my chin to her face. She catches a glimpse of the tears scurrying across my embrace. She says I'm fucked up. She says that my ex fucked me up. She says I didn't used to be like this. She stabbed a wound on the surface of my heart, a wound that didn't ever fully recover, a wound that was still throbbing in pain. The pain grew into some form of comfort. I don't want to grow old if it means I will turn out to be just like her. But why is it that I allowed this pain to enter my heart? The turmoils of the past don't haunt me until I go home and surround myself with holograms of abusers that seem to take the form of my immediate family. When others look at me, they say I'm hiding. They say I'm fighting to hold back the inner thoughts that jolt my mind. The surface of who I am is as mysterious as the ocean is in the deep moonlight longing to be discovered, secretive and captivating all at the same time, overflowing with gentle, but yet abrasive waves, longing for the touch of skin. Thank you. Thank you, Christina. That was beautiful. I love that holograms line. That was killer. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's good. Thank you for sharing. Right, yeah, thank you for sharing that. Only the pain grew into some form of comfort. Yeah, for real. Yeah, and also thank you for saying, Ona, if anyone does wanna share but doesn't wanna be recorded, um, you can totally, you know, pop it into the chat if you would like. Um, does anybody else, would anybody else like to share? FYI, I hear the Jeopardy music in my brain right now, which is what I always feel when I'm waiting for that. <laughs> 
to some of the people if they're going to share or not. Um, um, and it's totally cool if, if folks don't want to. This is, this is you know, it's, it, it's hard work. It's heart work. Um, so it is uh, not, I know it's not easy at all. Um, and cool. Folks also might be really hungry too. Um, Excellent. Thank you yeah. all so much for spending mm -hmm. time with us. Um, yes. This was really wonderful. We we do have a tiny bit more time. Um, it, if anyone wants to, you know, let folks, um, you know, if you want to read to just less people, um, that would be okay if you want to hang tight for a minute. Otherwise, thank you all so much for having us. This has been really wonderful. Yeah, um, it really has. And I want to let you know too how you can find us um, outside of, of the conference. Um, the first thing is that we are hosting um, the open mic um, for the conference at 7 p.m. tonight. We're very excited about that. Uh, Ona Wang and Chernell Lane, who are also part of the Surviving the Mic team. Uh, thank you, Christina, for saying that. Um, it is our pleasure to hold this space. Um, Ona and Chernell will be hosting the open mic tonight, so please come and support that. And then if you're not able to to make that, or if you just want to, you know, keep in touch with us and, and hang with us during our, our twice monthly virtual writing workshops, you can find out more info about us um, at www.survivingthemic.org. You can find us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, um, also uh, under Surviving the Mic. And you can also look under the community engagement tab on uh, case, C-A-A-S-E.org, uh, the Chicago Alliance Against Sexual Exploitation um, website as well to find uh, more information about us. Um, and yeah, thanks for hanging with us, everybody. Yeah, our writing workshops are the first and third Thursdays uh, of the month from 3 to 5 p.m. Um, our open mic um, is the fourth Saturday uh, of the month. Is that from, it, did we say 4 to 6 p.m.? Or is that 3 to 5? Because I can never remember. I think we're doing 3 to 5. We just okay. resumed um, performing um, <laughs> okay. programming. Um, <laughs> as yeah. the pandemic has continued, we've just been like, okay, let's just go ahead and bring this back. Yeah, word to big bird. Um, yeah, and I, I live with a tiny person who is who has hijacked my brain and hijacks it regularly. Um, so yeah, I'm totally blaming my child for that. Um, <laughs> all right, everybody. Thanks so much for hanging with us and spending time. Um, we're gonna wrap up. It's been our absolute pleasure to hang out with you. Big, 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 big thanks to Tere um, and the team uh, at the network for inviting us and having us um, and supporting us today. Thank you all so much.